Hi everybody, Sam from Over Renewables and welcome to our latest project out here in Dunnington. We've got a fantastic day to take you around this system. On this job we installed 10 Viridian in-roof solar panels of 335 watts each. We installed a 3.5 kilowatt solar edge inverter with the optimization so any shading issues which we've got on this property can be addressed. We've also installed our first ever solar edge energy bank. So this is solar edge's own battery storage system that integrates with their sort of eco setup of, of products so that everything can be viewed on one app which we'll go through but the first thing that i want to talk about is this fantastic property what a beautiful property this is because a lot of the time we get uh, not necessarily criticism but concerns over fitting new technologies like renewables kit onto properties like this because it may detract from the beauty of the property now this is the classic old english country kind of cottagey feel to it as this and we haven't detracted from that at all i'm going to show you the panels but there's literally no visual impact on this property apart from the panels on the roof which look fantastic and they're all black anyway so the first thing that i wanted to talk about was how we've uh, installed this kit and that it hasn't detracted from the beauty of this this property so yeah we'll show you through the of course this video where we've installed the equipment and the considerations we made as to positioning cable runs and things like that so yeah let's get into it Right, so we're going to start this video off in the garage. We're going to show you what we've installed in here, how it all goes together and how it all works. So let's have a look at the components on this wall that we've installed. So we'll start from the top. Up here we've got the 3.5 kilowatt solar edge inverter. We've then got our DC cables which come down and into this DC isolator. Those cables then come through this trunking and up into through these branch connectors into this inverter here. We've then got another set of DC cables which come out and into this trunking here and across they go into this solar edge battery which I'll show you in a second. We've then got on the AC side of the system we've got an AC isolator which gets its connection from the main consume unit of this property. We've then got our generation meter which logs any import or export from the system because this is now a, a hybrid system it can actually purchase energy in to charge this battery if the property has got a cheap overnight rate like many of them do now with EVs uh, needing to charge up overnight. That cable then comes out and into this solar edge inverter. We have then got a little LED toggle uh, here. We've got a blue light to show that the system is online. We've got a solid green light to show that the system is generating energy. We've then not got a red light, which is good, to show that there's no faults on this system. We've then got a little programming switch here and a DC isolation switch here for the inverter itself. If we then move down the board, we can see we've got the new Solar Edge Energy Bank. So this is a Solar Edge Energy Bank and it's got 10 kilowatt hours of storage capacity but 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So just to go into that, it means that the battery cells in here can hold 10 kilowatt hours. However, there needs to be a, a slight retention in the amount of energy that they charge and discharge with to keep the batteries healthy. So whenever we are talking to customers about battery systems, we always just talk in usable capacity. Because for me, if you can't use it, it's not that size battery. So like we never describe these as 10 kilowatt hour units because that gives the impression that this can hold 10 kilowatt hours, which it can, but you can only use of that 10 kilowatt hours 9.7. So we always talk to people about the real world figures. So this will charge and discharge with 9.7 kilowatt hours of energy and it does that through the solar edge inverter. So it's just another benefit of getting solar edge is that this can be used as a solar inverter, but it can also be used to charge and discharge this battery system. 
it also means that anything that happens within the with the solar or the battery is all logged and viewable on the solar edge app which means there's one place to go see how your home is doing with its import see how much you've exported see how much you generated see how much you've charged with see how much you've discharged with uh, you can even put your tariff in there to show your revenue um, see how much money you've saved uh, and spent you can do loads of stuff and the benefit of having it all in one app is that you don't have to open five or six different apps to try and then collate all that information to, to work out how your property is doing with its energy and nowadays with the cost of energy it's nice to keep some part of it simple so that's why we like this this all-in-one system been real with you guys um, we've had a few teething issues with the energy banks we've had um, a couple of issues with them dropping off the system where uh, suddenly there's no energy bank on the monitoring dashboard I'm never going to lie to anybody we have had these sort of teething pro problems we have one or two sites that have had a few issues with it's all been software related so not we haven't had any uh, actual physical hardware but I think because it's a new product or I know because it's a new product um, it's as soon as you release a product into the real world, suddenly there's little things that crop up all the time uh, in the real world that maybe weren't visible or weren't present when they were doing their initial testing uh, in their lab or wherever they've tested it. But with it being a SolarEdge product, SolarEdge have always been on hand to get it fixed and get it sorted. So we're in the process of just doing a few firmware updates and things with a few sites across the country, but we're getting to the bottom of them all. And when it is working, it's a fantastic unit and it works really well. One other thing that I want to quickly chat about is that if you had, we haven't got on this property, but if you had quite a large amount of DC oversizing, so let's take the example of if we had, say, five kilowatts of panels attached to this 3.5 kilowatt inverter, um, what can happen is if it's really sunny, this inverter can only ever generate 3.5 kilowatts, but we may, the panels may be able to send down five kilowatts if we had that many panels. If you didn't have this solar edge battery or a different type of battery, then what would happen is the optimizer, the inverter would clip that energy coming down from the panels to 3.5 kilowatts because it can't deal with any more. What it can do now, however, is it can put that clipped energy or the energy that it would have clipped and stopped coming down here into the battery. So this might be generating 3.5 kilowatts and there might be a kilowatt being charged into this battery because it would have been wasted otherwise. So that it kind of increases the amount of capacity that your inverter has because it can send that DC power that would have been wasted into the battery and it means that you're getting a benefit from it. So it's just another great reason as to why Solar Edge batteries is, is a fantastic piece of kit. We can charge and discharge this battery at a maximum of five kilowatts. So we can charge the battery with five kilowatts directly from DC. So it's a slightly more efficient charge than if it's going through a second battery inverter. However, we can only discharge the battery. We can, we can physically send five kilowatts out of this, but we can only send 3.5 kilowatts through the inverter. So that's maybe a slight disadvantage is that if you've only got a 2.2 kilowatt inverter, you can only discharge your battery at 2.2 kilowatts. In this case, we've got 3.5 kilowatts. So we can, we can push down this, this cable 3.5 kilowatts as a maximum, or we can grid charge this battery with 3.5 kilowatts. So yeah, it's quite a versatile unit, but we are limited to this inverter. If you had a six or an eight kilowatt or a five kilowatt inverter, then you can charge and discharge this at, at maximum. It's only for really below five kilowatts. So this next part, is the actual measurement part of the system. So how does this system know when to charge? How does it know when to discharge? There's a few things it needs. First thing it needs is it needs to know how much solar production there is. It then needs to know how much the property is using. So if the property is exporting or importing, and it does that through this CT clamp just here. This CT clamp then goes around in this cable and up into our adaptable box just here. And within that adaptable box, there is a solar edge Modbus meter. So that Modbus meter can be used for loads of different things to monitor, you know, additional solar PV that might not be solar edge on a different system, but we've used it as an import export meter to, to look at what this clamp here is doing. We then, out of this, we then go up this flexi conduit and into the trunking above, and that all feeds into the solar edge inverter. That information is then put onto the dashboard so that the, the customer can see what they've imported, uh, how much it's cost them, see what they've exported, um, and see all that information. But crucially, this knows that if this sees a kilowatt going back to the grid, then it knows it's got a kilowatt that it can charge it with because effectively there's a kilowatt of solar PV going back to the grid. 
if it sees a kilowatt of imported power, then it knows that, okay, this, this property needs more power than the solar can produce. So I will discharge an extra kilowatt of power. So it basically just does the maths and has a look at what's going on in the system and reacts accordingly. Um, but yeah, that's a little, that's kind of one of the most important parts. For such a small part, it's one of the most important parts on this system to make sure that everything uh, works properly and reacts to the real world situation of this property. Okay, so we've had a little look at what we've done down here, but let's go back to when we're installing this system and we did a little walkthrough of how we're installing the optimizers and their purpose. So yeah, let's check that out. So we're inside the loft now, so we're directly underneath those panels that we saw on the roof. We've got the solar edge optimizers. So you can see here, they're kind of matching the layout that we've got. So this is that bank of, of three that we've got on the roof at one side. Um, so all those optimizers are on the back of each panel, but inside the loft. So one of the main reasons we, we like to do that is that if any of these optimizers ever fail, we haven't got to set a scaffold back up, remove the panel and change the optimizer. We've got all the connections just on the other side of this loft. Can't always achieve it. If the customer hasn't got a loft space or doesn't want them in the loft space, then they would go on the back of the panels. But uh, we find this to be a nice, easy way to be able to maintain those connections and, and those optimizers. So you might be able to hear in the background, Dean is doing all the work <laughs> and he's clipping the cables, uh, clipping the cables back. And um, so he's clipping those cables along the, the timber um, all the way back round through a couple of cupboards and all the way down to where Ollie's working near the inverter. Roofers are actually on the roof now as well. So they are uh, putting the slates on around the sides of the, of the panels. So uh, yeah, they're cracking on. So it's gonna, gonna look really good this one. Can't wait to see the final result. Right, so we're up on the roof now. So you can see behind me, we've got 10 Viridian 335 watt panels. So that gives us a total installed capacity of 3.35 kilowatts. So that's feeding down towards the solar edge inverter in the loft and that solar edge battery. So this is the, the main powerhouse. This is where we're generating the energy. You can see it's an in-roof system. So uh, the roofers are here, they're slating in around our uh, flashings. So you can see they've got about halfway up this side at the minute and they're butting their slates up to this little rib here. So that runs all the way up. That foam is there to seal the edge and that's gonna be slated in all the way around um, the, the full roof. So we're just waiting for a f one more flashing to arrive. But as soon as that comes, we can get that last flashing on and we'll be done on the roof here. But I really like these systems because unless you're looking for them, quite often you don't see them on someone's roof. And if you're doing a, a re-roof or a renovation, putting these panels in saves you buying all these slates. So it's uh, always a good idea to consider putting solar in roof because there's no better time to do it than when you're doing roof repairs. The scaffold has to be here for doing all the roof repairs anyway. Um, so why not make use of it and put solar on your roof as well. You can see here we've got the this bottom flashing so that when the guys have finished roofing it all in that's all going to be dressed into the gutter so that only any water runs off straight into the gutter and and out down to the fall pipe so that means there isn't any little little slating cuts or anything like that that needs to be need to be put underneath all of that that can just be nice and neatly dressed into the into the gutter we've had to bring this down fairly low uh, because we wanted to keep some space on the top of the panels for the guys to be able to get a couple of courses of slates in um, so that we're not uh, we're not tightening them up there we ideally wanted this as high as we could to remove the shading from the next door next door neighbors but we have to work with what the building is and we've dropped them as low as we can to create as much space at the top of the system for the roofers to get the slates in. But yeah, it's looking fantastic and can't wait to get this turned on. It's a nice sunny day, so it would be generating some, some healthy power. Okay, so let's have a look at the Solar Edge app and how this customer can monitor the system, how we can monitor the system, just to make sure that everything's working okay. We can deal with any initial queries straight away because we're able to see exactly what's happening on the system via the app. So I've got our company iPad just here, uh, so I'm going to run through this app. This is what we can see. The customer's version is slightly different, but all the information is basically the same. So let's get into it and let's see what we can see. So on the app itself, we can see what the solar is doing. So currently the solar is doing 2.2 kilowatts. It's actually charging the battery, which is directly below the solar panel symbol. And the battery is currently at 36% charged and there's 2.03 kilowatts going into that battery. We can then see that there's an arrow going from the solar panels 
over to the house symbol. So that house symbol is what is being used in that property right now. So you can see there's 230 watts being used in the property and then the, the furthest right hand symbol, which is a pylon, that is what the property is either buying in from the grid or exporting back to the grid. So you can see at the minute it's nothing. So there's no kilowatts coming in or out from the grid. If this property suddenly was charging electric vehicle or the kettle went on, the oven went on, sort of the high load devices, we would then see all of these figures change. The battery would probably react to that, start discharging and all the solar power would also go into the property. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on that as we go through the app. If we then move down the app, we can see underneath there, we've got today, this month and lifetime. That is the total amount of kilowatt hours that this system has generated over those different time periods. So today, this system has generated 2.47 kilowatt hours. This month, 142. Lifetime, nearly 500. Uh, and then there's also a revenue under there based on what this property pays for its electricity. If we then move down, we can see power by day. So we've got another couple of time differences here. We've got day, week, month, year, or billing. So if we stick with day for now, we can see that today, this system has produced 2.47 kilowatt hours, which we saw before. We've then got a 57% self-consumption. So out of that 2.47 kilowatt hours, 57% of that has been self-consumed, either directly as things are being used in the property, like that 230 watts of energy that has been used in the property, that's direct usage from the solar, or by the system putting that energy into the battery and then discharging it on an evening or during a high load period. We've then got a 43% export. So that is that equates to 1.07 kilowatt hours. So you can see it's a really clear indication as to how much you've self-consumed and how much you've exported back to the grid. We've then got under that a consumption. So we can see that this home has consumed in total, regardless of it being purchasing from the grid or being uh, used directly from the solar or from the battery. That is just how much the, the home has used today. 42% of that 3.29 has been through self-consumption. So we've got that 1.39 kilowatt hours figure again. We've then got the import amount. So how much this property is purchased from the grid. And that is 58%. So this this property has purchased 58% of its power today that it is used in its home and that equates to 1.9 kilowatt hours. So it's all very low figures, but that'll obviously change during the day as the battery charges up and then as the battery discharges during the evening. So these figures will, will move around all day. If we then scroll down, you can see then we've got a graph based on the, the different timestamps throughout the day. And if you look at this on the dashboard on the computer, you can get even more information, move your mouse along, and it will show you exactly what's been happening at different intervals during the day. If we then scroll back up, we can then change that information based on the week. So you can see the information is fairly, pretty much the same apart from, it's now giving you the day by day amount of energy. So you can see how much we've produced on the 14th. Click on that. We can see that on the 14th, the property uh, produced 17.16 kilowatt hours. It self-consumed 15.93 kilowatt hours. And it, if I can click on it, it consumed in total 17.4 kilowatt hours. So you can see the differences throughout the day, week, month, year. So we're gonna go to month, that'll give you the, the days of the month. Year, that'll give you the months of the year. So you can break this down loads and also the billing cycle. So you've got your quarters there. So if we come back out of all of that, we can then scroll down to uh, comparative energy. So this will show you and us how much your system has, has produced month by month throughout the year. You can see at the bottom, we've got a little green square saying 2022. So in 2023, it may be a, then a blue graph. 2024, it might be a you know, red graph and it'll overlay all that information so you can see if there's been a massive drop off in your generation. It might just be that it's been a, a terrible month and really wet and, and drizzly or the month from the previous year was really bright, but it gives you that, uh, that ability to compare what's been happening. So that's all really good. If we then press on this battery symbol at the bo bottom here, we can then see what the battery is currently doing. So the 1.4 kilowatt charging, you can see all the information about the serial numbers and the capacity. That's where we've got that 9.7 kilowatt hour usable capacity in this. 
Um, we then move over to the panel symbol. Now, I want to talk to you about this side of things. If you've watched some of our videos, we go on about the Solar Edge system all the time and its optimization, but this is a really good example of why Solar Edge had to be used on this property without question. So if we if we zoom in here, you can see that this is this is the daily one. But if I tell you what, if I change that to monthly to get a bit of a wider range, you can see here how much each panel has generated um, in total in kilowatt hours. So if we start on the right hand side, we can see right at the top right, we've got 17.5. If we work down, we've got 17.53, 16.93. And if we work along, they're all pretty much the same. Um, the ones over, the ones right at the top have generated the most. We've got the top right and top left have generated very similar amounts. But in this bottom left corner, this panel here in particular, we can see that it's got a really uh, low generation in comparison to the others. It's still generating, so this month it's still generated 12.09 kilowatt hours in total, so it's still worth having. But you can see around that panel, say this one as well, it's affected the generation and that's because there's a house literally right next to this roof which does affect the, the generation of this property. If we didn't have solar edge on this then that 12.09 kilowatt hour panel, that panel number 1.13, that would affect the generation of all of the panels in total if they're all on the same string. So that means that suddenly half of these or all of these panels may be generating at a lower rate because that panel is dragging it down. With this system, you can see the one right above it is has actually generated 15.27, this one just here. So that means that it's not affected it, even though it's literally right next to the panel. Each individual panel is working to its own efficiency, which for me is just a fantastic benefit of, of Solar Edge. If there was no shading on this, and we had a look at, look at this system and we saw that that panel was generating 1.13, we can then dive into this a little bit deeper and we can start to see optimizer voltage, the current coming out of that panel, the voltage and the power. That's kind of like an instant image as to what's going on with that panel. However, if we wanted to see what's been happening over the past month, we can go into our dashboard on the, on the desktop and we can compare the, the generation, the voltage, the current, whatever we want, we can compare this panel to this panel or that panel. We can compare it to them all if we want. And then we might be able to see then that that panel is only ever reaching say 15 volts when it should be up at near 35, 40. So that then gives us an indication that, okay, the panel might be faulty. We can then put that into a report, send that to Solar Edge for them to verify that with us and send that to Viridian to say, look, we think we've got a panel fault here. Uh, that in itself allows us to do a lot of the hard work with fault finding before we set another scaffold back up on this job, before we actually get up on this job and start taking panels off. We can do so much deep diving into this system sat at the comfort of our office. Um, so again, even though this stuff, the solar edge element may add a thousand pounds, 1500 quid, depends on the scale of your system to it, it would save, or in most cases save, the need to have a scaffolding up to do a lot of fault finding because we can do a, a huge amount of that on here. It might be that it's not the fault of the panel. It might be a pairing issue or, you know, it could be a whole number of different things. If we can investigate it now without the cost of a scaffold, without us having to arrange to come back and lots of other things, it saves time through lost generation as well. So it saves money through that, but also saves money through having to set a scaffolding up when it's maybe not even required. So that's a, that's a key part to solar edge in my opinion. That is pretty much the full system in a nutshell. Like I say, the customer's app is slightly different, but it shows all the same information. It actually shows a little bit more information with regards to the battery, but we don't have access to that with being the installer. So you can even add a, a photograph of, <laughs> of your install at the top if you want. We've got the kilowatt hours peak there and the current temperature in this location. You can see there that the grid has just turned on with three watts. It's two watts now. The battery will see that in a minute. There we go, and it'll get rid of it. So. That is the Solar Edge app, and um, I think it's one of the best apps out there, personally. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video or in any of our other videos on our channel or on our, any of our other social medias, please feel free to reach out, drop us a DM, leave the questions in the comments, all of that good stuff. Also, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, post, no, I'm joking, but send it to all your friends, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you on the next video.